It's a hot one here in West Grove, Pennsylvania today. Our decking material has uh, finally arrived. So we've got that been delivered and uh, we're ready to start installing that. But there's one last step that has to go on. We just had that tornado come through in Oxford not too long ago. One of the things that we were thinking through, even in the design phase of this project, is how we we're going to make sure that the roof is being held down and secured because we're using these aluminum posts. Now, normally, if we had wood posts like we did on the other deck that we showed you in Lincoln University, you just run fasteners for everything. Now, with these aluminum posts, it's not quite that simple. So we're gonna show you the system here today that we're gonna be using to tie it down, keeping your roof from flying off in the next tornado. Welcome to this edition of Forever Home. Let's get going. So Norm is working on putting the finishing touches on the uh, anchors and the hold downs on this side. And I'll grab one of them so we can see what we're looking at. So the way these aluminum posts go together is they have feet and caps that get screwed down to the deck board. We set it over it. And according to the manufacturer, they just want us to run a self-tapping screw into the side of this cast aluminum block. I'm just not convinced that the holding strength is there. And when you start crunching the math, if you uh, look at the Insurance uh, Research Institute down in uh, South Carolina, they assemble full houses inside of a giant wind tunnel and then try to blow them down and they're creating a set of standards called the fortified home building standards and they talk through some of the math that's required to make sure that you have the holding power well for this roof in theory there's a potential for about six thousand pounds of up force lifting this roof off should a tornado or hurricane come through this area so how are we going to hold this down and make sure that the structure remains standing a couple of self-tapping screws through this little cast aluminum plate regardless of what the manufacturer says, is not sufficient for that sort of load. So here's what we've come up with. This is a stainless steel eye bolt. It is welded at this end. So what we're doing is installing them down in the wood and running a bolt through them to help tie the anchor bolt down into the structure of the deck, which of course is anchored down here with four joist hanger nails on this side of the plate and four on the other. So those fasteners are in shear. This fastener is going to be in shear and then we're gonna be in tension on the all thread. So the next thing that we have is a stainless steel all thread coupling. So we're gonna put those right on the top of here. And then we're gonna connect all thread rod to this and we'll show you another video where that gets tied all the way into the beam with a load bearing plate on top and more nuts and fasteners to put this whole system in attention to lock that beam down onto here. And then of course we have our hurricane trist straps that go from the beam up to the rafters. And again, we'll show you that on a future video, but I want to show you some of the detail that goes into this. Now this one's already been covered up, so you can't see it here, but we got one left before this goes in. What we've done is basically taken a drill and drilled two holes and then connected that with vibe tool or chisel or whichever. And once we've got that hollowed out, we're able to put this bolt down in and put our half inch, we're going to use half inch galvanized fasteners in and through with a nut on the back side. We've got some temporary ones just holding it for now. Uh, and then we filled this entire pocket through the roof uh, adhesive sealant product and that's going to make sure that, any, that no water can get down in there and just sit in that pocket and damage things over time. So we've got six inches of lumber that we're going to be bolting through to help anchor the roof line down into the structure. We'll have six of these pins plus our beam pocket that's going into the house and with all of that uh, we are fairly confident that we have enough holding power to deal with what the Insurance and Business Safety Institute says is required uh, to make sure that this is not going to go anywhere should some massive winds come through. So this is the setup that we're gonna be using. And then this foot can slide over that, get mounted where it needs to go. The post can go over that. This all thread's gonna run right through the center. It'll never be seen. And that's gonna make sure that we have uh, made sure it's not just done, but it was cope built. So Norm is in the process of extracting our temporary placeholders. And so this is what we're using. These are called through locks and we're using this in most everywhere else in the deck, but about 3 16 maybe quarter inch in diameter. That doesn't really have the holding power, especially uh, you know, when you put that much up force on it right here in the center. If we were gonna have this eye bolt pulling up on that, I just don't trust that there's enough holding power there. So we're gonna be going with half inch carriage bolts galvanized and uh, Norm's gonna get that run in here in the corner to make sure that we have all the holding power that we need all the way around the deck. Now, of course, before we could get into placing all of these, we had to finish the layout of the deck. Where's the skirt board? Where is the picture frame gonna go? And then where, how are we gonna center that post and get that located properly in the picture frame board all the way around? So all that had to, math had to be figured out ahead of time, making sure that we're plumb underneath where our beam's gonna go. And we're kind of, you know, hazarding a guess and figuring some things out because obviously that's not there yet. And where exactly is plumb and is the house plumb and all those different factors that go into making sure that we get these bolts set in the right location the first time so we can slip our picture frame boards over top of that and then build the rest of our deck structure and once our decking boards are crossed and we can start standing up our aluminum post and setting our beams now a couple other things that we worked on here today 
uh, the customer had a sump pump in the basement that we were running. We had extended out underneath the deck because we didn't want it flooding out underneath here. And so that was here and we had just taken a shot back hose to run out the backyard temporarily. But we brought in a piece of four inch black corrugated pipe and we're gonna screw that into the wall and that's gonna carry that wastewater out here away from, you know, this is a usable yard. This is where the kids are gonna play. So we're gonna move that over here to the corner and situate it in such a way that it's not gonna leave any water coming under our foundation. It's gonna roll right out here and run across and down this grade. So we'll move it away from the usable yard. We get usable yard on the side, we get usable yard over here. This slits area right here in the center, it's got so much slope to it that if we're gonna have to soak something, this is the area that I wanna do it. And they say the sump pump doesn't run that often, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. So we've got that piece set. Our framing is going in for our lattice. It's kind of just a start being working, working ahead on that. So once the deck boards get on, we've already run our electric and our coax for the uh, television to go now back here. We've laid out to make sure that our screen room door is gonna work where it needs to work on the railing because the goal is to leave that one post. If we were to remove, we're gonna remove the section of railing here at the end, but if we were to remove that right-hand post, then there would be a hole left in the deck. And this deck board is now so old that we're not gonna go find a replacement support. So rather than leaving a hole in the deck, we're just gonna leave that, that post there and eliminate that section of railing. And that'll keep things looking pretty without having to go through the expense of redecking this entire product over here on this side of things. So German's working on getting the next holes drilled for this to get our carriage bolts through. Once this process is complete, we are ready for filter fabric and uh, the next step. So you can see that we've already got the joist tape on most everywhere except for that last one because I wanted to show you what that looked like with the uh, through the roof in it. I've got joist tape on here. And you're really, if you're redecking a deck, redecking an old deck, or if you're, you're building a new one, the joist tape is really cheap insurance. It just does a great job of keeping the water from getting down in the fasteners. We've taken old decks apart and the joists are fine, except where the fasteners went through and where they were sitting on the deck board. So this really helps act as a gasket to keep the water out of places. You don't want to sit there and just soak and rot the wood over time. So that goes on. And then let me grab the filter fabric and we'll show you what that's gonna look like. Now, what good is a screen porch if you got bugs inside of it? So the goal here is to do everything we can to help keep the bugs out, short of them coming in through the door. Well, one of the places that bugs often come into a screen porch area is actually up through your deck board. So before we put the deck boards on, what we're gonna be doing is taking some landscape fabric, and this is a good heavy duty, one of the more expensive ones that they sell. We're gonna line this up on the joist, and there'll be a little bit of overlap between each one, and we'll staple this down. And just to really just tack it in place until we're ready to put the deck boards on. And we're gonna cover the entire surface of the deck with this filter fabric. And what that's going to do is to give us that bug proof course of the room by having that completely across there on top of that joist tape before we put the deck boards on that way the bugs can't get up from the bottom because it's gonna be pinched at every one of those joints and every one of those locations so that's probably gonna take us through the better part of the day when the guys finish getting these anchors in we'll get that filter fabric across and hopefully start laying out the picture frame today the next video we bring you we should have decking all the way across and we're working on prepping the side of the house to receive both the beam pockets already in but we have to uh, lay up the mounting strip for the screen track to go on to. Uh, so that's going to be happening here fairly shortly. Our trusses have been ordered, so we're waiting for them to get delivered. It's going to allow us to set the rest of the roof. So we're going to get the deck board on, the beams up, and everything racked and stabilized and supported. So we're ready to go on that. And once all that happens, we'll be ready to take that truss delivery, set our trusses, sheathe our roof, put the shingles on, take that window out, put a door in, and uh, Keep this project moving along. So this is Drew in beautiful West Group, Pennsylvania. There's nothing our team doesn't do. Roofing, siding, windows, doors, decks, anything on the interior of your home. Renovate your kitchen, remodel your bathroom, finish your basement. Plumbing, electrical, drywall, spackled paint. Build your custom dream house or garage addition. Take a picture of what's bugging you and let us know what problem we can solve. Send it to us right here on our Facebook page. Click that contact us button there at the top. Our team's available weekdays, 9.30 in the morning until two in the afternoon. You can send us your pictures, your contact information on Facebook or give us a call, 484-748-0008. Choose option two for Coat Built, your full service construction and renovation company and extension two for new projects cope construction is a pennsylvania home improvement contractor number 88078 and registered in newcastle county delaware 10490 what problem can we solve for you but when we're finished with it you'll be proud to say it's not just done it was cope built we'll catch you in the next edition of forever home bye for now